Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this video is about three different methods to measure impedance with the Nano VNA, or for that matter, any VNA. Let's look at the three different methods and when a particular method might be better to use. Shown here is a little adapter I built. It's built from two uh, scavenged in female connectors soldered at uh, right angles to each other pretty much such that the pins ex extend into this area uh, slightly. The pins were cut off and, and, ex and extend only just a little bit in here. Spacing is about 0.15 inches between the pins. And we can mount a component that we want to test from pin A to the ground tab here, C. If we do that and we drive port 1, and by the way, port 1 and port 2 are the conventions that all my VNAs use except for the nano VNA where they call it channel 0 and channel 1, which is unfortunate because port 1 and port 2 make much more sense when we talk about S parameters. But nevertheless, if we put a component between pin A and pin C and we make a connection by connecting just the port 1 from the VNA into here, we make a measurement of S11, which is the reflection coefficient. That's the first method to measure impedance, and everyone who has a VNA probably is familiar with that method. The second method would be to connect the component we're trying to measure from pin A to pin B. This is the generator side again. Now this is the receiver. And we measure the through gain to the receive port, gain and phase both, giving us S21 for the connection where a component is in here. We'll call that the series through connection. And finally, if we tie pins A and B together so that we have a through connection from port 1 to port 2, but we have the component going from this common point down to ground, we can call that the shunt through connection. And again, we get a different uh, measurement of power at the receiver than we did with the series connection, but all three of those will measure impedance. Again, here's a smaller version of what we just saw with end connectors. SMA connectors soldered at right angles pins A, B, and the tab C. They're a little closer spacing, and this works better for smaller components. Also, you could tie connectors end-to-end -end like this with a little gap in the middle, and effectively you have the same thing as, as you had here. You'd have A, B, and then C would be any of these ground legs. And I've used all these in the past to make measurements of impedance. And this is a SimSmith circuit that shows the three different methods of measuring impedance and I'm going to use SimSmith to calculate just like a VNA would calculate. The first circuit is right here. It's comprised of a generator. All the generators are the same generator. All the loads, um, these two loads are 50 ohm loads. This load is a high impedance load. The first generator here drives the component across the generator only. The load is out of the circuit. That's why it's one tera ohm. In this case, we measure S11. We measure the reflection coefficient. The generator is here. There's a reflection bridge in here, and we'll measure that. In the second circuit, we will have a generator here, a load here, and we'll have the component in parallel with the two. Here we have it in series with the two. So we have three different ways, the same three I just described before. And by the way, if, if you don't like generators on the right, SimSmith can turn them around the other way if you want, and everything still works the same way. So the first thing I'd like to do is control all three of these components that I want to test to have the same value. So I set this block right here to do nothing but, but that. It has the value that I'm going to put in for the component, and it drives all, it sets all three of the components to match it. So in this case, if I change this to, say, 4.5K, all, th all three of these change to 4.5K. If I change these down to, let's go to zero for, let's go to zero for a moment. The zero ohm load, we would expect here to see a reflection coefficient. It's one. We'd expect here to see no transmission to the output. We'd expect here to see 100% transmission to the output, and. You know, it's, this, is, this should be pretty obvious to everybody who's, who's watching this. Let's go back to where we were before, say, 5, 5K and, one, and say minus 1K. It doesn't really matter what the values are. And all the action is taking place in this block. So let's look at this block. And there's a lot of stuff going on in here, but it doesn't, it isn't really all, doesn't all apply to you if you're going to use this. 
the first thing we do, and this is a comment, this is, this is measure S11 is this circuit right here. We have the definition of what S11 is. It's the impedance of the device we're trying to test minus the reference impedance. That quantity divided by the sum of those two elements. And we can then solve for the device, we, the, the resistance of the, the impedance of the device we're trying to measure here. And the way SimSmith would do that, SimSmith knows is something called gamma, which is the reflection, complex reflection coefficient. So the impedance is G dot Z, Z naught, which is 50 ohms, times this ratio. And that gives us the impedance of the device under test. And we see it right there, 5K. So SimSmith calculates that as 5K minus J1K, which is exactly what it is. Let's look at the second way of doing this. The second way, similar to before, is now a circuit where we have, we, we, like, we think of this as like a two volt generator in series with a resistor that's G dot Z naught, and then a load here, so that if we have nothing in here, we get one volt in the output. So what we would do here to calculate the function that we need to, to do this with, we would parallel these two components, and then the circuit becomes, this voltage right here becomes this parallel component value divided by the sum of this parallel component value plus that resistance. Simple, you know, basic algebra and pretty simple circuit. And if we do that, we come up with ZD is equal to Z naught times S21, which your generator will give you, divided by two times the quantity one minus S21. If we do that, and this is, this is the only formula you need up here, this is the only formula you need down here. Your, remember your generator, your VNA is giving you this S21. But if we want to look at this a little more closely, we can calculate the power into this load and the phase angle into this load if we want, voltage, whatever we want to do, and get an S21 value for that. And if we look at that, what we see is with the with a 5K load here, we see that the power into the load resistor here is only minus 41.6 millivolt, milli-dB. So it's less than a, it's, it's, 0, it's 0 0.04 dB of loss across this component. And that looks pretty reasonable because this is a high impedance component. If this, if this component was, was out of the circuit, this would be zero dB. I'm applying one watt Actually, I'm correcting for it here with the power. It doesn't matter how much power I apply, but it calculates the correct transfer function. And if, if there's any question on these things, let me know and I can explain them in more detail. But so what we see is we see we would, we would see on your VNA screen, we'd see a, a transmission loss of 0 0.041 dB. We would see that equa equates to a voltage of 0.995 volts if, if the generator was a two volt generator. And the angle is minus 54 milli-degrees. So it's pretty resistive load. And if we went, made this go to zero ohms, we'd of course see the angle being zero again. But um, so now, we're, now we have a, a pretty small loss in this circuit. Let's look at the series circuit. The series circuit is completely different. Again, we measure the voltage here by being nothing more than this value divided by the sum of all three resistors times the two volt generator. And that's shown here. And we get a, it's shown right here. And we get this formula. And if you had your VNA give you a um, S21 value, you could substitute in this formula and turn that into an impedance. Some VNAs will give you this directly without having you play any games. Um, I've got two VNAs that will calculate this directly and others that just give me S21. So anyways, I calculate the power into the, into the load resistor here, and I can calculate the phase angle and the voltage, etc. And when I'm done, I can calculate the impedance again, and I, you see in all three cases, I get the exact impedance. But in this third case, what we have is the power into the load is 34 dB down from what the generator produces. That means that if we change this, say, this 5K, let's change this 5K to, say, be four and a half K and watch all three of these values. We're going to watch the 
S11 change, so I'm going to go to 4.5K. It went from 0.981 minus J, that's 3 milli, um, so it's 003. So let's make it 4.5. We see that change from 979 to 981. That's pretty fine resolution, and you might have a hard time, your VNA might have a hard time resolving the difference between those two values. Let's look down here at the power output at the load, and as we go from minus 0 0.041 dB M, in case, in, or sorry, dB uh, gain across the across the circuit. We see it just goes to minus 0 0.045. Can you resolve 0 0.004 dB? Maybe not. In the third case, though, if we look at this, we see it's down 34 dB, 34.2. And now it's down 33.4. That's point, point 0.8 dB or so. This is more easily resolvable. So for a high impedance case, it would make sense that using the series connection would be wise. You, have, you, see, you see more action taking place at the receiver or at the reflection coefficient point when impedance is really high in this configuration. Likewise, if we were to go down, back here and let's set this to be, say, let's make it 1 plus J0. At 1 plus, or 1 plus J0, we should see, so we see a very high reflection coefficient here, 0.96. And if we change this by, say, just, let's change this to, say, point, point 0.9 nine ohms from 1 ohm. This point went to point 0.964. So a 10% change in this, and this was from 0.960 to point 0.964. That's hardly anything. Now, if we look at the power into the shunt circuit by having a low impedance here, we see a lot of attenuation over here. So we see 28.3 d minus 28.3 dB, if we set this back to 0.9, it went to 29.1. There's 0.8 dB change there. So we could resolve that pretty well. And let's go back down, look down at the power of this one on circuit three. And that is, it's 0 0.077 dB. And if we go to one ohm, 0 0.086. We might be able to resolve that Again, it's 0.01 dB, though. This is a much easier thing to resolve. So circuit 2 would be a much better circuit to use. Now, if the impedance is somewhere around 50 ohms, then, of course, this circuit works much better. We see lots, we see, let's change this back to be just geometric. If I change this, say, 10%, we see big change here from 0. And we see changes on these two, but generally this would be considered to be the better way of going. I was always told that if the SWR at the, at the impedance you, you know, in the 50 ohm circuit, if the SWR was less than about 4 to 1, you wanted to use this circuit. If the SWR was more than 4 to 1, but it was on the low impedance side, you'd use this circuit. If it was on the high impedance side, you'd use this circuit. Now let's look at uh, an analysis that someone else has done that shows exactly this. Looking for some corroborating evidence that would indicate that what I just said was basically true. I did a search for three ways to measure impedance with a VNA. I get a lot of hits. I mean, there's 181,000 results. Of course, you know, most of those won't be of any value. But the first thing that comes up is kind of interesting. And if we, cl cl if we click on that, which is right here, it's done by a company. What's pub this was published in a different in a magazine, but the original ar art article was done by a company who makes a VNA. It's pretty high, pretty high performance VNA. It goes to six gigahertz, and it's about I think it's about eight thousand dollar little VNA. But anyways, nevertheless, they did exactly the analysis I just did. You can download the article in, P in a PDF format if you wish. And they show the three configurations I just showed. They show pieces of transmission line here. Of course, when you calibrate with the little, the little adapter that I put in the middle, and you can calibrate. Um, when you do that, you get rid of the effects of any cable outside of that. So um, you, cal you calibrate your VNA, and you can make these measurements. And what they did is they, they, just, they get the same formulas I got, and 
unfortunately there's an error in this this there's this is an error right here this formula if you take this formula which is correct and you solve for for z z is the what i called zd in my formulas for the device we were trying to measure the impedance of the original article the original web page that was not included in it was not from this magazine but doesn't show up first in the search shows it right it's two times z naught and then the numerator is one minus s21 and the denominator is s21 and here it's not that uh turns out this this was just an error it's got everything else is right in the analysis so if you see that that's wrong but this is the right formula and it's kind of fun to go through these i mean you take these circuits and you just put a generator here with 50 ohm they've got the generator on this side generator 50 ohms 50 ohm load and you can do some basic algebra and come up with the answer with the answers you'd like but they go through all this measurement they they took a derivative and they measured this component sense the impedance change versus the error in doing um, either s21 measurement or s11 they knew those for their particular vna and this is highly dependent upon the vna that they used but since they designed the vna we, we assume that they 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 understand how it works anyways they come up finally with a a graph and the graph is what's interesting let me make a let me make this graph larger and there's the graph in full scale and what we have are three curves the red curve is a shunt or the s11 measurement error and we see that that error goes almost down to zero at 50 ohms 5e1 is 50 and it rises on either side and as it rises it be it's rising because as the impedance gets away from 50 the reflection coefficient becomes a value that gets closer and closer to one and as you get closer to one it's harder to resolve the differences uh, between one one value and another say from 0 0.999 to 0 0.9991 0 0.9992 it's extremely hard to do that i also showed a 5 to 1 swr range on here and that's that's where i would probably have used this measurement and if i'm outside of that measurement this show this blue curve shows the expected error when you're doing the shunt through measurement which is the component across the from the center conductor to ground in, in the uh, adapter and it shows that to be used at low impedances the series error shows it for high impedances and that's exactly the conclusion i came to before and that was the whole reason for showing this if you keep on searching more you can find some stuff from keysight you can find stuff from other companies and they all show slightly different curves this this analyzer looks like the crossover point between the shunt and the series through methods occurs at about 30 ohms not 50 ohms why it's at 30 i have no idea but that has to do with their measurement accuracy and all kinds of stuff like that but nevertheless if you're trying to measure something like a 10k resistor you want to be doing it with the with the series method you want to measure a one ohm resistor you probably want to measure it with the sh with the shunt uh, through me uh, method you're measuring something more in the middle ground area you want to measure it as an s11 measurement and I see people making comments about making measurements with the nano VNA. Um, this is just another another tool and another piece of information that helps us all understand how to do things a little bit better. The next video I was going to do concerns some measurements I made on surface mount parts a few years ago, and I think you'll find that pretty interesting. If you enjoyed this, let me know. And um, like it if you like it. If you don't like it, let me know again. This is a lot more complicated than previous videos. But uh, it's another tool in the arsenal to make better measurements. Thank you very much.